Good morning, guys. It is Jonathan with One Big Impact. <clears throat> I'm going to turn the light off and we're going to get heading to work. I wanted to talk about a few things. If you're new here, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Go check us out on Healthy Living for a Healthy Life on Facebook. That's our Facebook group. Also, World Travelers on Facebook is a group. And Instagram at One Big Impact. If you have any business inquiries, please forward them to my email address, thrifttime at gmail.com, T-H-R-I-F-T-T-I-M-E at gmail.com. I want to talk about the importance of goal setting. Does it mean anything? And if so, what does it really mean? I'm the type of person that... It is, and I've said this many times, delusionally optimistic. Now, I don't want to see, say, when you're a person that is bipolar, you are usually, you have this innate ability to have a sense of grandiose, meaning like thinking that you can achieve pretty much anything. But what I know as uh, a person is <clears throat> I've gone through times where I don't believe I could achieve anything. Hence the tattoo that says believe right there. At that time in Colombia, uh, just a few weeks before I got that tattoo, I actually stopped. I don't want to say stopped believing in myself, but I was definitely, definitely questioning my ability or what I was believing at the time because I had showed up in Colombia with a couple bucks in my pocket and it was crazy I left my business card at a Starbucks I literally had pretty much no money and I went to the next place um, and a guy messaged me on WhatsApp WhatsApp and he said hey are you still in town I'd like to train with you or meet up with you about training long story short I met up with him and it paid for my entire month I was living the dream I was feeling great met some amazing friends and towards the end of that trip I got the tattoo believe because at that time I was really pushing so far to where I thought maybe I had out believed my beliefs <laughs> The law of attraction and goal setting a lot of the times go very close hand in hand. I've set a lot of goals over the years, and I mean a lot, a lot of goals. Some of the more popular ones that a lot of you guys know about are the cabin, a truck, um, a gym getting my own place, going to school, seeing the world, hitting six countries a year, traveling. Some of the ones that you don't know about are finding a girl of my dreams. And I get really detailed with that. I get really detailed with a lot of my goals. One of them that I'm currently really, really streamlined towards is the cabin. Okay. For the first time in my life, I've actually figured out how to save a little bit of money. And I'm really freaking proud of myself. Really proud of myself. I'm doing amazing with it, and I'm going to keep it up, and I'm doing good. I've got about 90% of my credit cards paid off in the last maybe six, seven months. I really, really hit it hard. The reason I'm saying that goals are so important and what they mean to achieve goals and what they mean to like focus on goals is I've talked about a lot of different things, okay? <clears throat> Rewinding back to Colombia. When I went to Colombia, I had booked something with Airbnb and they canceled it on me in the last minute the reason I didn't have any money when I went to Colombia is because it was going to take 21 days to refund the money. 
I was leaving in just a few days and I wasn't going to cut it, but that was just the way it was. The apartment I had picked out was nice. It had a little breakfast bar area and tiny little living room, tiny little bedroom, nice little bathroom, nothing crazy. Nice window out front. That was carpet. It was it was cute. It had a little kitchen, nothing crazy. But it had enough to be able to do what I needed to do. A few months ago, obviously I never got that apartment. A few months ago, I was sitting in my my house, the one I moved into about five months ago, six months ago, something like that. And I started to think. I was looking around and I was living in the apartment that I picked in Columbia. It was crazy. The bar was the same. The everything was very identical. It was it was interesting. There have been some people coming into my life that I've noticed are part of my story. I had a goal a few years back to lose some weight and I did. I've had a loop goals now to put on some muscle and I'm doing it. You really got to get specific with your goals, okay? I said I was going to hit a 600 pound deadlift and I did. Which in all actuality is pretty damn crazy considering just a couple years ago I had shoulder surgery and they were telling me nothing was going to happen. About six months after that I pulled 405. Didn't really focus on it, got back into it, tried really, 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 really hard and got 500 over the course of about six months I think. Fast forward two years, started trying again recently and I got to 600. I'm at 605 now and I write these things down in a journal all the time. I update my goals and different things. I had, I believe, 11 credit cards when I started paying off these things. I'll be com completely honest, I like to spend money. I guess they call that a spendthrift. But I think I've paid down probably five to seven thousand dollars in credit card debt. Over the course of the last six, seven months to a year. And I write these things down. I update them. I literally have two left. That's it. Since I started my goals about four years ago, I said I was going to hit 6.5 countries per year. I'm at 29 countries do the math I'm about five ahead which is good because of the current crisis we're not allowed to travel at the time at this time I think <clears throat> what you might not realize is when you set goals and you start really really focusing on achieving things and writing them down and keeping them in your mind and talking about them and posting about them and doing all these things and discussing it with people and reading about it and learning about it and trying to expand your knowledge in every way, shape, and form about these things. They really do just come to you. It's crazy. It's crazy when you think about that because when I used to talk about them, nothing ever came to me. It was just words. That's all it was. Well now, it's, it's more than words. I'm putting action behind those words and I'm actually shutting up more. Obviously I'm posting about it and I'm keeping my visions alive. But I think what's great is, the greatest thing is when you don't realize what's happening. A few years ago, for example, and I've used this one before and I'm gonna use it again. 
I remember sitting at a bus stop. Coffee on myself, of course. It's great. I remember sitting on a bus stop and I didn't have a bike or nothing. And I was watching the the uh, cars go by. And then somebody goes by on a bike and I said, man, this bus stop sucks. If I could just only have a bike, I would feel so much better. Then I remember getting a bike and I was riding down the street. I saw a piece of crap car. And I said, man, if I could just get a piece of crap car, I wouldn't have to ride this damn bike. And then I got a piece of crap car. And then, of course, what did I want? I wanted a better car. Fast forward a few years. Well, now I have a 2015 Kia Sportage. I'm not saying it's the most elaborate car in the world, but it's got a damn backup camera. It runs good. I make a $350 a month car payment. I have a really nice bike that sits on my freaking wall. I think the most beautiful thing is when you catch what has happened without even knowing it. Adding up income and doing different things and stuff like that can be really cool if you've been working and striving and really grinding out and trying to do your best. I remember a few years ago when I started the traveling, I was at... I was only making like four to eight thousand dollars a year. I'm not gonna share what I'm making now, but I can buy my own steak. Ellen, thank you. And I owe you a steak meal. One of those little things that I've caught. Ellen in the group, Ellen Winchittle. I was saying, man, I'd love to have a steak. She sent me 20 bucks, I think, 20, 25 bucks. She's done it multiple times. She said, go buy yourself a damn steak. I was never really a steak person. I had food stamps for a lot of years and I would just buy the cheapest of the cheap, which in all actuality made no damn sense. I didn't really know much about steak. But now it's different. I know ribeye is my favorite. I knew New York is pretty damn good too. I know the bottom round and the flank and all that is junk. And just because it's cheaper means 100% that it's less quality. It's not going to taste as good. The marbling and the fat and all of that stuff that is really good is not going to be in there. Maybe it's going to be leaner, but it's not going to have as much flavor. I've bought a lot of steaks, a lot. I eat one usually, right now, currently, I eat one every day. I eat one every day to remind me that not only have I rose above needing, you know, all the handouts in the world and going to get food boxes all the time or asking for people to bring me food because we don't have any on Craigslist and they drop it off and people giving my credit kids Christmas presents because I couldn't afford them. I'm obviously not on the top of the world yet, okay? I got a long way to go. But I'm ready to fight for it, and I understand what it's going to take. If you don't understand, if anything's in your way, like your mind, and you're saying, well, Jonathan, I can't afford a $10, $20 steak. There's a guy that I talked to recently and every single thing that comes out of his mouth is, I can't afford it. If that's your mindset, keep it to yourself. Be 
because if you can't afford a $10 or $20 steak, you gotta step up your game. You gotta do more. If you have dreams of traveling the world, but you can't afford it, well, the first thing I would tell you is that's bullshit, okay? I'm not saying you're gonna go to every country in a year and you're gonna do these $1,000 a night hotels or anything like that. But how is it possible that somebody makes $8,000 and goes to 18 countries? in a year. I would love for you to explain that. Belief. Goal setting. Understanding that it's probably not as hard as we think. The biggest challenge is our own freaking mind. It really is. Set the goals. If you want to lose 50 pounds, write that shit down. Don't let your mind or anybody else creep up in you and say you can't do it. Write it down. Get the next five. Five pounds. After that, get ten. After that, get five more. Boom. Goal done. After you reach a goal, reach higher. Go to the next goal. Figure out what you're going to do to make it better and more. You're not going to think... And a lot of people say that, well, what happens when I reach that goal? Reach further. Reach again. Now you know you did that. Keep the momentum and understand that you can do more. If you think about it, I'm paying for this vehicle, right? And it's not this big, elaborate Chevy truck that I want, right? But I do believe now, and I know now, that looking forward in the years ahead, that this is... A stepping stone in the right direction and I understand that this is the second car I financed this was a big jump much more expensive than the first one I financed first one I financed was I think six thousand dollars or something like that the Cadillac CTS 2005 one of my favorite cars I've ever had in my life blew the engine ended up in another freaking mess of a Honda had the Harley, that thing wouldn't run right. I was having issues with that, driving me nuts. Broke down in the Honda like 25 times. Finally said, screw it, went into the dealership. Boom, pulled the trigger. And you know what's funny? I never showed proof of income. I never did anything like that. They never even asked for a bank statement. They said, do you want to go see your car? Because I went in there confidently and I said, I want to pay 250 a month. I don't want to show any bank records. Here's what I make. This and that, blah, blah, blah. Run my credit, let me know. They come back and they said, Jonathan, would you like to go see your car? I thought, oh shit, man. This is gonna be a piece of trash, whatever. I went out there and I saw this. I got in it I said, huh, can I test drive it? And they said, yeah, come on. I test drove it and I was like, done. 250 a month. Now you're probably thinking, well, you just said 350. My payment's actually 333. But it's because I got the above and beyond, you know, warranty and insurance and stuff like that. I really wanted to seal the deal and make myself feel good about my purchase. You guys, sitting back at that bus stop and wanting a better car, I'm there. You know, sitting back in my mom's house a few years ago saying, I want to get out of here, I want to get out of here, I want to get out of here. I'm there. Sitting back and saying, I want to make more money and I want to get off food stamps. I'm there. I want to be able to afford a steak. I'm there. Seven times over. I want to travel the world and see castles. I'm there. I'm going to own a cabin. I'm going to be there focusing on it. You just watch. If you have things that you want to achieve, write them down. Don't blow it off. You only get one chance at this life. Be stronger than your excuses. Remember to spread love, not hate. Drink your damn water. Stay on track. Hashtag team boo. This is not to build up any kind of thing that you think might be an ego that I have. This is just to show you that I promise you it works. Focus. Stay dedicated. Write it down. 
tiny little increments, you're going to be able to achieve your goals. Keep up the good work. Have a good day.